Hello again, everyone. Starting off with Houston Week, I'm going to look at the Houston Astros of the MLB. The Astros do play in the AL West, which is a pretty tough division. Um, the Angels, Oakland Athletics, Seattle Mariners, and Texas Rangers are the other four teams in the AL West. Uh, the Rangers did have an off season last year for sure, but the Angels, Athletic, and Athletics, and Mariners all had uh, at least 87 wins. Um, the Angels won the division with a 98 and 64 record, which is really impressive. Any team that can get over uh, 90 wins in a season is is very competitive and a great team. Um, the Mar Mariners were 87 and 75, and the Athletics were 88 and 74. So pretty close teams there. Houston finished last season with a 70 and 92 record. So based off of that, if they have any playoff aspirations for this upcoming season, they'd have to almost flip their record uh, based on the division they play in, which is going to be tricky um, because the Angels, Athletics, and Mariners are all teams that are competitive, um, they're going to find ways to win, and the uh, Astros are going to have a tough time flipping that record. I think if they can try to manage something like 500, I think that would show they're going in the right direction, they're progressing, they're making improvements. That would kind of be my set, mindset as uh, Houston Astros. I know before every season, um, you know, every team's in first place uh, before the season even starts, and that's the mindset you want to have is you want to get to the playoffs, you want to win the World Series as a professional athlete in any professional sports league. That is your goal, that should be your drive, and if that isn't, then you should get out of the sport because, um, you know, individual statistics and individual, like, MVP and those kind of things are great achievements as an individual, but baseball is a team sport. You want to win a World Series, you want to get the ring, um, and that's important for any player in the MLB. I don't think Houston has the talent yet to get there, um, but the nice thing with Houston is that when you are a struggling team, you get a lot of high draft picks, you get a lot of young talent, which is exciting to watch, and unfortunately, with them being a struggling team, they probably don't get enough TV exposure unless you're living in the Houston area, or until they get to those games where they're playing the Angels, and they're playing the Athletics, and they're playing the Mariners, and teams that are very strong in their division, um, being from Canada, obviously, when they play the Blue Jays. They'll be there for sure, um, not being televised. But unfortunately, since they're not a very strong team, um, rarely are they going to get picked for an MLB night showcase kind of thing on any team, on any uh, on any broadcast because they are a struggling team and they're not that great. But like I said, the nice thing is since they do struggle, they got a lot of young talent that is exciting to watch. So hopefully you do get an opportunity to watch some of these young players this year because I do think Houston is an exciting young team to watch that is going to blossom and turn into a contender down the road in a few years for sure. Um, they did lose Texture Fowler in a trade for um, their center fielder, which I think might hurt him a little bit. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Fowler last year did 276 average with eight home runs and uh, 35 RBIs with 11 stolen bases, so he's still he's still a developing guy, but I think he just has a lot of great speed to cover the center field, or center field position for sure. Looking at their pitching staff, um, they got Kuchel, who last season had a 2.93 ERA, 12-9 record, and 200 innings pitched with 146 strikeouts, so that's solid right there. Uh, Feldman had a 3.74 ERA with an 8-12 record, 180.1 innings pitched with 107 strikeouts, and then you have McHugh, who had a 2.73 ERA, an 11-9 record, and then 154.2 innings pitched and 157 strikeouts. So McHugh is your strikeout per inning pitcher for sure. Um, Kuchel also, like I said, 200 innings pitched, 146 strikeouts, so he can get some strikeouts as well. Um, their records and their ERAs don't really match up. When, when you have a starting pitcher that can have an ERA under three, and they only have a combined 23-18 and 18 record, um, which is good, five games above 500 for sure, um, that means they're not getting the run support, and they got to find a way to get that run support. So looking at some players they got this offseason that I think will will help with that. Um, Jed Lowry, obviously a great young shortstop, uh, 249 average last season with six home runs and 50 RBIs. He also had 29 doubles, so that's good. Getting a guy on second base is a great way to score some runs in an, in an easy way. So um, hopefully he can do that for them this upcoming season. Uh, losing Dexter Fowler, you have to find some center fielder. They did pick up Colby Erasmus, literal injury prone. But I think um, the money you, you pay for him, the risk and reward, it balances out no no problem at all. Last season with the Blue Jays, he had a two twenty five average with 18 home runs, 40 RBIs, but he only played in 104 games. So we'll, we'll see what happens. If he can stay healthy, I think he's a good veteran presence for that team, and maybe he can um, boost boost his career again and see if he can get it roll, rolling there um, in, in Houston. They also picked up catcher Evan Gaddis, who last year had a two sixty three average with 22 home runs and 52 RBIs, but that was also in just in 108 games, so he didn't play a full season, so 
these uh, those two guys I just mentioned with Rasmus in center field and Gaddis as your catcher, who knows what they can do with a full season under their under their belt. Um, you know, as as a catcher with a with a, as a catcher, if you can have a twenty plus home run season as a catcher, that's just impressive. That's not a position you expect to get power from. So hopefully he can produce a, a, a power bat for them from that position for Houston this year. Gaddis can do that. Um, they also picked up a couple of pitchers, which I think are going to definitely help out their rotation for sure. Uh, Gregerson had a 2.12 ERA uh, with a 5-5 five and five record uh, in 72.1 innings pitched with 59 strikeouts last year. And then Nishik had a 1.87 ERA with a 7-2 record in 67.1 innings pitched and 68 strikeouts. So he's a strikeout per inning guy as well. So I think I think their rotation is strong. I think they have a very good rotation. Uh, they just need to get the run support. Um, so look at, looking at some players they have that are staying on the roster from last season, um, the big player that I think a lot of people aren't, or unfortunately he's not going to get looked at, unfortunately he does play in the same division with um, Robinson Cano playing for the Mariners, is their second baseman for the Houston Astros, Altuve, who last season had a three forty one average with 70, seven home runs, Seven, not 70, sorry, seven. Make sure you hear me correctly. Yeah, 341 average, seven home runs, 59 RBIs, and 56 stolen bases with 47 doubles. So he is a great player to have on your team, great guy to have at the top of your lineup. Any any player that can bat over a 300 average is, is fantastic. 56 stolen bases is means he's just a beast on the base paths. You get him on base, he's going to get in the pitcher's head, pitcher's going to make mistakes, and and that's why you can have guys batting behind him like Chris Carter, their DH, who last year he only had a 227 average, but he has 37 home runs and 88 RBIs. So if, if you get people like that batting behind Altuve and he's on first base, well now the pitcher's you know going to be paying too much attention to Altuve on first because he could steal a base or anything like that. So then he's not going to be paying as much attention to the batter, so the batter's going to have easier pitches to try to hit. Um, and with with Altuve's speed. You hit, you know, you hit a deep single down down the right field or left field line. Altuve can hustle in and score a run for you from first base. He's got that speed for sure. So, like I said, unfortunately, he does play in the same division with Robinson Cano, so he doesn't get the exposure I think he deserves. Altuve is a great young player. Keep an eye on him. I think he's going to be a cornerstone for the Houston Astros for a year to come. Um, if Carter can get his average up, I think he becomes even more of a threat at the DH position for the Astros for sure. Um, his production with 37 home runs, 88 RBIs is great, but a 227 average is a little low. Even if that was a 247 average, so even if he just bumped it up 20 points, um, that that would be great for them, I think. Um, Singleton, their first baseman, he also had a solid season, uh, 13 home runs, 45 RBIs, but he only played in 95 games and he only had a 168 average. So. The next players I'm going to be mentioning are guys that didn't play full season with the teams, uh, but I think are, are going to be up-and-coming guys that you want to keep an eye on for sure. Um, uh, they got two shortstops listed on their team as shortstop position, but with Jed Lowry, we'll see if they move these guys around. They might play another season in AAA. We'll see what happens. Um, Villar, who last year had a 209 batting average, so not a great average, seven home runs, 27 RBIs, but he had 17 stolen bases in 87 games, so he only played half a season. So if you give him a full season, he could have a 40 stolen base season. So between Altuve and Villar, if Villar plays in a full season, you have two guys that could have a combined 100 stolen base season and just two players, which would be fantastic. Most most MLB teams as a full roster would be happy with 100 stolen bases in a season, let alone just having two guys that could potentially do that for you. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Gonzalez, their other shortstop listed on the roster, he had a 277 average, so much better average, with six home runs, 23 RBIs, so similar production to Villar. Um, but he only, and he played in 103 games, so he played in about 15 more games than Villar did, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, left fielder Presley. He had a 244 average with six home runs and 19 RBIs in 89 games. So we'll see what he could do maybe with a full season under his belt. And then George Springer, uh, he had a 231 average with 20 home runs, 51 RBIs in 78 games. So again, we'll see what he could do with a full season under his belt. Um, you could have with Chris Carter and George Springer, you could have two 30-plus home run guys in your lineup. So if you can have two guys that can steal 100 bases and two guys combined that can hit over 60 home runs, that's fantastic. So I do think the Houston Astros have a lot of young talent that are going to develop and make them a contending team in a few years from now. I think um, last season they had a 70, 70 to 92 record. So I think this season, if they could try to aim to get to a 500 record that shows they're pr producing more, that shows they're improving, 
and I think they will be successful down the road. I think if their pitchers can get the run support, then they're going to have even more success. So good luck to the Houston Astros in this upcoming season. You do play in a tough division. Keep an eye on Altuve. I think he's the most exciting player um, on their roster to watch um, stealing bases and running, watching him on the base pass. He's just a gem to watch. Like I said, unfortunately... Houston probably doesn't get enough exposure that they should because they're a struggling team and the more successful team is obviously the more they're going to get exposure that's just the way it works so there's nothing nothing they can do about that but if you do get an opportunity to watch them on t on, a, on television please do so they're a very young talented team that I think in a couple years are going to be a very competitive team in the AL West and I think the Angels Athletics and Mariners need to continue to find ways to improve their team and stay strong because the Astros are going to be a team to reckon with um, by the end of this decade, I would say for sure. So again, good luck to the Astros this upcoming season. Thank you again for watching, and I'll be talking to you tomorrow about the Houston Texans of the NFL.